But joining us now with more of the ranking Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, Doug Collins. We'll get back to my monologue in a second. Uh, Congressman, you actually picked up, I saw on Twitter, uh, you're the guy, a lot of credit. I stole it, so I got to give credit and attribution. Uh, the hypocrisy of what he said then and what he's saying now. It's just amazing, Sean. I mean, what we saw today is just, it's just full bore. They want to destroy Bill Barr because they don't like an attorney general who actually does his job and follows the law and follows the rules. Think about what just happened today. Bill Barr did what the regulations said they were to do. He actually offered more than he should have. And what do they reward him with? A contempt in record time. Ten times faster than Eric Holder was held in contempt. This is over 400 days for Eric Holder. We're less than 40. This is nothing but a political crusade to do bunk Bill but Barr because they don't like it. what he's doing. The reason they're doing it is because they fear what Barr said to Senator Lindsey Graham, which we played numerous times. The Mueller report is over. He's not changing his mind. That He has the final definitive answer there. But now he has been very clear. Hillary's rigged investigation, FISA abuse. We, of course, also have the Horowitz report, uh, an attempt to undo a, a duly elected president, the abuse of the intelligence committee, um, the intelligence uh, tools that we have by a few high ranking people. All of this now will come to the forefront, will it not, sir? It will. And I think that's what we're seeing in the attorney general. And what we have today is, and again, you brought this up earlier, when you have a, a chairman of the Judiciary Committee say that a subpoena is something to start a dialogue with, that's, that's crazy. That's not what a subpoena is for. It's not to prop up your uh, position in court. It's actually to get documents. And he asked for everything, including what the attorney general can't give him. He's asking the attorney general to break the law. You want to know what this was about today? All you got to do is listen to what Hank Johnson from Georgia said. He said, we've got to get the documents. But so how can we impeach if we don't get the documents? And then when asked about the time frame, he said, we don't have 400 days. Sean, this is, the people need to know what's happening here. There's a rush to judgment because they don't like what you just saw just a few minutes ago in Florida where the American public are seeing a president who is leading, who has an economy that's booming and growing. Last uh, exit question in a few short seconds we have. Uh, you courageously have released the closed door testimony of, of Bruce and Nellie Orr and uh, the, the general counsel Baker and Strzok and Page. There are 53 other closed door testimonies that I am aware of. Will you continue that release? Yes. Get ready for that. I would tell anybody to stay close to Twitter, stay close to the next few weeks. We'll be releasing the rest of those. Any this week, sir? Probably not this week, but we're getting ready for next week. We want to let the Democrats, their hypocrisy shine this week, and we're going to get back and watch what Bill Barr is doing, and we're going to get back exposing this to the American All people. Right. Congressman Collins, Georgia, thank you. It's a political standoff, the likes of which we haven't seen in about a generation. The White House today invoking executive privilege to block the release of the full Mueller report. It comes the same day Democrats voted to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt. They're calling it a constitutional crisis and promising to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. But moments ago at a rally in Panama City, Florida. I love it. Hello, Spinnaker. President Trump said it's all a bunch of nonsense. Watch. Almost $40 million, 20 Trump haters, Democrats, and call them angry Democrats. After two years, nothing, no collusion. And now the Democrats, we have a great attorney general, now the Democrats are saying, we want more. You know, it was going to be like, we want the Mueller report. Now they say, uh, Mueller report? No, we want to start all over again. It is a disgrace. And by the way, the president is still there speaking. If he makes news, we will dip into the rally. Don't you worry about that. But let's get back to the vote on Capitol Hill today. The House Judiciary Committee this afternoon voting to hold Barr in contempt 24 to 16 right along party lines. Democrats did it after Barr refused to turn over the full unredacted Mueller report to them. And it came after explosive partisan fighting all day long. Check this out. No person, and certainly not the top law enforcement officer in the country, can be permitted to flout the will of Congress and to defy a, a valid subpoena. No person, not the Attorney General, not the President, can be permitted to be above the law. Democrats have no plans, no purpose, and no viable legislative agenda beyond attacking this administration. And if it weren't for him being President, he'd be in prison with Michael Cohen today as individual one, 
and he obstructed justice as the Mueller report says it's so. We are in danger. We need to respond and we need to act for the people of the United States of America. I think it's all about trying to destroy Bill Barr because Democrats are nervous. He's going to get to the bottom of everything. He's going to find out how and why this investigation started in the first place. Our Democrat colleagues have weaponized our critical oversight responsibilities. And moving today to hold the AG in contempt is not only premature, unprecedented, and unwarranted, frankly, it is shameful. I think, we believe, the American people deserve better. And right after the vote, Chairman Nadler ran right to the nearest microphone, as you can imagine, screaming that the White House is usurping too much power from Congress. Jerry? There can be no higher stakes than this attempt to to arrogate all power to the executive branch away from, the con from Congress and, more important, away from the American people. We've talked for a long time about approaching a constitutional crisis. We are now in it. We are now in a constitutional crisis. Buddy, a constitutional crisis is not going to maintain the House or win the presidency. Go back to the idea board. Between the executive privilege over the Mueller report and holding bar and contempt, is this really a crisis for the nation, or do Democrats need to chill just a little bit? Here with me now, former Whitewater Independent Counsel, Robert Ray. Welcome to the show. Nice to be with you. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about contempt from the legal side, how this has played out in the past with you know former AG Eric sure. Holder, Harriet Myers, Lois Lerner, and others who have been uh, subject of contempt of Congress, but nothing really ever happens, does it? Well, this one's striking. Uh, you know, remind our, our viewers that Bill Barr's only been in office, what, less than three months? And lo and behold, he now finds himself in the middle of a uh, contempt proceeding which is a rather extraordinary development. I mean, you know, most of the time what happens is it ends up in litigation and ultimately really kind of fizzles out mm -hmm. because the court system obviously takes so far much longer than any other way to speedily resolve, you know, the dispute. But uh, the other striking thing to me about it today was apparently during the negotiations, of course, continued on apparently through last evening, mm -hmm. the Democrats were prepared to offer that if the Attorney General of the Department of Justice agreed to go to court to seek an order to release the grand jury material, they would drop the contempt proceedings. So, frankly, to me, that tells you all you really no need to know. They're not really serious about contempt. Contempt was just a means uh, of leverage in order to gain access to more of the report, which they know they can't because the feckless Jerry Nadler a profile and cowardice mm -hmm. wants to have it both ways. He doesn't want to actually say that what they're doing is an impeachment proceeding, and he knows that he has to say that under the law in order to at least have a credible application before a court to unseal the grand jury material. And, and he can look at the unredacted report. He's one of the 16 members of Congress who can actually go and do that, and then he can go back and inform his caucus. He can have staff members take notes and, and keep those notes. And all he argued today was really about procedure. Well, I don't like that. I was going to have to go to the Department of Justice. And then the Department of Justice offered, well, okay, we'll, we'll bring it to you. We'll make yeah. it available. Well, I want to have the ability to take notes and talk to my colleagues. So it's a whole lot about procedure. Yeah when we're talking about something really serious, which is contempt. And of course, that's just the bootstrap, really, for what Nadler wants to do, which but, is to argue that there's a, a constitutional crisis and, when and there really isn't one. This should be withheld, all of these actions, until there is something very serious and, and until there is a constitutional crisis and the health of the nation is at risk. And, you know, losing the majority in the House, that doesn't meet that threshold. And that's when you get into really dangerous territory in terms of losing voters uh, people already don't like Congress. They distrust Congress. Uh, the president is enjoying better approval ratings right now in the wake of the Mueller report release, but he still has an issue with the Southern District of New York, where uh, you're very familiar with the SDNY. How much of a threat does that pose to the president? I suppose theoretically it does, although, you know, if you listen... Do they have an axe to grind with him? If you listen to the media, though, it suggests almost that the Southern District of New York is an island. It's not an island. Yeah. The Southern District of New York is part, last time I checked, is part of the Department of Justice mm -hmm. and answerable to, guess who, the Attorney General. And certainly with regard to significant and high-profile matters, you would expect there to be close supervision exercise by now the Attorney General of the United States, just as there was previously, at least 
certainly with regard to matters involving Russia and anything related to the president would have been supervised by the, uh, the, 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 the soon to be former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Uh, Robert Ray, thank you so much for your insight. Hope we talk to you again. Nice to be with you. Very good. Nice to talk to you. I'm happy to see you in the flesh with me right now as the former federal prosecutor, John Sale. A very good read of all things drama in Washington. John, good to have you. Good to be here. All right. Um, you're not surprised by this, but what do you think happens next? Well, I woke up this morning and I saw television that the DOJ personnel and uh, the Senate, uh, the House committee personnel had reasonably reached a compromise. Then I realized I was dreaming <laughs> that uh, the stunts, the empty chair, the chicken, I mean, as a citizen, I mean, we should be embarrassed. They really should have reached a compromise. I, I didn't start off defending the attorney general, but the way he was treated by uh, when he appeared the first day, I mean, whether or not you support Bill Barr, you have to respect the office of the Attorney General of the United States. Uh, you said, I think you said 92% was not redacted. Actually, in the obstruction part, which everyone cares about, only 2% was not redacted. Interesting. And today, Chairman Nadler says, well, we really don't mean 6C material. Well, of course they meant 6C material. The Attorney General, because they asked him to agree to go to court to an agreed motion, he couldn't do that because the law does not support but John, the release of uh, grand jury uh, here, and, and uh, we had been talking about this not too long ago. Nadler is the same guy who, when the, 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 the Clinton investigating report was out, didn't think it had any value being, being released in total to the public. So that was then. I know politics is politics, but man, that's weird. It's not weird because you said politics is politics, so it's really understandable. But wh what could the attorney general do? They offered to, pro except for 6E, to provide everything else to just... 6E like, refers to... A grand jury, I'm right. sorry. To just okay. grand, they offered, and they can't give that. They offered to give everything else to a select number of the uh, House leadership. They can't give more. I mean, can you imagine something not leaking in Washington? I mean, if you can, you know, you'll be on another planet. They're talking about sensitive intelligence, ongoing investigations, and they offered to make that available, but only to a select number of people, no notes. Well, that's the way it's done. In my practice, I've had cases where judges have ordered the release of sensitive material, same ground rules. Well, ground rules are, I could go in, no assistance, no notes. That's the compromise. It's not one that they've created. And you know, it's interesting too, because I, I was telling her, John Roberts, uh, that it looked like you know, Barr was set to talk to this committee. Then there was this added wrinkle where they were going to have a lawyer talking to him, even though most of that committee had made up of lawyers. And I think he probably felt, especially after six hours, you know, speaking before the Senate, I, I don't need this. Now, why did they make those special arrangements in that committee? As you said, the majority of the members are lawyers. If instead of making speeches for five minutes, if they asked questions, we wouldn't be here today. But this is true. It doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican. Right. It would be reversed, the same thing. Ask legitimate questions, and maybe they would have had the Attorney General's testimony, and then maybe we wouldn't be here today. The subpoena is ridiculous. It's just political theatrics. All right, so let me ask you about what the president is now saying. You just can't willy-nilly start calling up people who worked for me or still work for me, Don McGann, chief among them, the former counsel, um, that, that that's a slippery slope, attorney client privilege, God knows what else, executive privilege. Where, where, where are you on that and how big a deal that will be to get him to come to the committee or committees? Well, if you read the New York Times, which I do every day, a number of very respectable people said, oh my God, the republic is collapsing, separation of powers is gone. They're forgetting there's a third branch of government. This will all be decided in the courts. So separation of powers is not over. The founders are not turning over in their graves. But the courts aren't in any rush, right? Uh, no, the courts are not in any rush. However, in Watergate that I was a part of, it was decided in four months. Nix, the Nixon case went to the Supreme Court, unanimous decision, only four months after we issued the subpoena. 